I'd like to say good evening to everyone and welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958 and since that time we've gone about to establish branch schools throughout the United States, Canada and certain other foreign countries. This Syracuse branch was established in 19. 39. 69. I'm sorry, 69. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to the Dean of our Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison. In the school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The correct name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which has been improperly substituted by Lord. The correct title of the word or son is Elohim, which has been improperly substituted by God. And the correct name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, which has been erroneously substituted to read Jesus or Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord or God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. Would some investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew or the Greek nor the Latin languages contain any characters or letters that would produce a sound made by this letter J. The letter J didn't come into the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah, therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is spirit and in His pure spirit state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source substance, limits and bounds of everything in the universe. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn the cloud all the way around the edges of the chart and everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim, the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form appears in divine visions and is understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifests in a fleshly body and walks the earth plane is Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. Therefore, the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It's called a divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. He instructed Moses to build one exactly as he had seen it in the wilderness. It consisted of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. Now also in this school we go about to show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern 
and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now in the school we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, both philosophy, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tongue-tied here. Psychology. S psychology, philosophy, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with a hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. And this evening we'll have the lecture dedicated with a prayer by Dr. John Frazier. That will be followed by our scriptures, which is Romans 8, 28 through 39. And our scripture readers are Dr. Deb Cometti and Dr. Trish Bennett. And that and all scriptures will be read by them. And then we'll have guest acknowledgments by Dr. Trissy Bennett. Good evening, class. Good evening. I'll be reading Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 28 through 39, and I will be reading from a King James Bible, inserting the true names where necessary. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh Elohim, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What things... <laughs> what shall we then say to these things? If Yahweh be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of Elohim's elect? It is Elohim that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is the Messiah that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh Elohim, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahshua? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in our Messiah, Yahshua, our Savior. And that was Romans 8, 28 through 39. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you tonight. Um, welcome to our school where we continue to learn more of Yahweh's eternal purpose, pattern, and plan. Because only in a school can you learn, and that's what we're here to do. We have a visitor tonight, uh, Dr. Lionel Vamanju, and he is from our Hamilton, Canada class. Uh, we welcome him and welcome all of you. It's just a great pleasure to be here with all of our brethren. Um, it's a spiritual feast. It's the only place in my life that I feel totally relaxed and comfortable. It's where I want to be. So with that, uh, we have no first-time visitors or returning guests. So um, welcome and enjoy our class. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, Trissy. <clears throat> I just want to remind people to silence all your cell phones and devices. And I would like to call on the first speaker, which is our Dean, Dr. Patrick Trevison. Good evening. Hi, Good evening. We're missing Rose here. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be up long at all, but I have something I wanted to share with you. I mentioned this a few weeks ago or so, and I, I wanted to bring it in and share it with you. because it's a witness in the scientific community. Just the stuff that's, you know, uh, got lines or, you know what I mean, Deb? Talks okay, so this is National Geographic, September 2019. The article is called, Why You Like What You Like, by Bill Sullivan. No. Now, it comes from a study called Toxoplasma. Gandhi, which I'm not going to get into. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the... specific scientific things of this, you know? Because they just tend to confuse people. I want to keep this simple, and I want to keep it short. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and read them. These studies made me wonder if there are any other things happening under our radar that could be shaping who we are, programming our likes and dislikes. Now, these studies, these studies right here, made him wonder if there were anything's, anything going on inside us that were shaping our likes and dislikes other than what we thought. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. As I dug into the scientific literature, 
I hit upon this astonishing and unsettling truth. Now, as he dug into this scientific literature, he hit upon this astonishing truth. Now, you can call it fake news, you can call it whatever you want. He's calling it an astonishing truth. Now, you'd have to research it and determine whether you felt it was an astonishing truth or not. Go ahead. Our actions are governed by hidden biological forces. Which Our actions are what? Governed. Governed by hidden biological forces. Forces. Read. Which is to say that we have little or no control over our personal tastes. We have little or no control over our personal tastes. Now this goes in, let's go, as far as what kind of a woman you like, what kind of a political party you choose, what kind of pasta you eat, <laughs> you think you're making all these choices, but just hold on. Go ahead. Our behaviors and preferences are profoundly influenced by our genetic makeup. Our choices are <coughs> profoundly influenced by our genetic makeup. By factors in our environment that affect our genes and by other genes forced into our systems by the innumerable microbes that dwell inside us. And by the innumerable microbes that dwell inside us. So there's all these things determining the choices that you make. Other than just you thinking I'm choosing this. Okay? Hear me out now. Go ahead. Somewhat distressed at the level of control genes, genes seem to exert over our choices in life, I investigated an area that I was sure would be more impervious to the reach of DNA, our taste and political leaders. So, I skipped over a whole lot of this article. It's a short article. But I skipped over a lot of it. So he's saying he, he said he went to a thing that he thought well, he was sure genes had nothing to do with, which was what, Deb? Political leaders. Our choice in political leaders. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It's easy to imagine genes playing a role in whether someone is left or right handed. But Left or right-handed, you could see, oh yeah, my genes would determine that. Go ahead. But whether a person leans politically to the right or left, I thought not. Nah. Whether, you lean, whether you're liberal or conservative, nah. He don't want to admit to it. Read. Yet, as unlikely as it seems, the votes are in, and DNA has scored another victory. DNA has scored another victory. Now look, DNA, first of all, where is DNA? All your cells. It's in every cell, right? Mm -hmm. And where in every cell? Most holy place. It's in the nucleolus or the most holy place. And the DNA, what is the DNA? The boss. <laughs> it's the pattern. Right. The DNA is the pattern. Right. Now pattern comes from what word? Patre. Patron or French. Which means what? Father. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is all tying back to the Father. So 
even science now is leaning toward the fact that <laughs> they don't realize it, but that it's the Father who's determining things. Read. Please. Several studies suggest that variations in our dopamine D4 receptor gene influence whether we vote red or blue. Whether we vote red or blue. Science has shown that you are not who you think you are. Science has shown you are not who you think you are. Go ahead. There are biological gremlins driving every action and personality trait that you assumed were of your own vol vol volition. Volition, or volition means what? Choice. Choice, Choice or will. You thought were of your own will are not necessarily of your own will. And if you get reading this article, it's very interesting. And it's funny because the whole magazine was devoted to the Arctic. And how the ice is melting and how all this is go global warming and all this stuff. And this little article was in the front of the magazine. And I found this article and this is what interested me. <laughs> go ahead. This realization is disheartening at first, but knowledge is power. Knowledge is what? Power. Power. How about that? Yes. Now we've been teaching that for a long time. Yes. Long time. Read. Knowing the mo molecular basis of our adverse behaviors should put us in a better position to curb or remedy them. Accepting that other people have little choice in how they came to be. See, accepting. That other in people, how that how other people have little choice in how they came to be they came to be should engender more empathy and compassion should engender in us more empathy and compassion do you understand Perhaps with the In other words, instead of getting all upset with them, realize that it's Joshua running the show. That's right. Joshua running the show. Oh, I can't stand that person. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And realize, well, maybe they just couldn't help what they did because that's what they were meant to do. But go ahead. Perhaps with the confidence that we are not in total control. Maybe with the confidence that we are not in total control. Now look, this, I didn't write this article. This is coming from the Toxoplasmic Gandhi people. <laughs> from the scientific community. From the community that Brooke hangs around with. <laughs> See, that we are recognizing that we are not in total control. Right, Deb? That's right. Read. We can resist the urge to praise or blame and seek the understanding. We can resist the urge to praise or blame and what? Seek understanding instead. Seek understanding instead. Kind of a nice little article. Yes. Nice little article. So if you want a copy of this article, you're welcome to, t to take it. It was from what month, Deb? Uh, September 2019 of National Geographic. Yeah, it was from this past month, September 2019, National Geographic. Now, uh, let's go to scripture reading. Like I say, I'm not going to be up here long at all. So, this is just, uh, like I say, share this with you and... Uh, Maybe set this off on a certain note. And that's not to say 
the lecture has to go that way, the lecture can go with whatever's on your mind. Right. If you're called upon. But go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh Elohim. To we them. know, no. Sorry. Is that the, is that the twenty eighth verse? That's the twenty eighth okay, verse. Okay, I'm Did you sorry. Want to lower, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh Elohim. For them that love Yahweh Elohim. Read. To them who are the called. For to them who are the called. See, it says in your book that many are called, right? Correct. But how many are chosen? Few. Few are chosen. It says that wide is the what? Door. Wide is the gate. <laughs> and in this tabernacle, wasn't this gate wide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, how wide was this door? Not very wide. It's three foot wide. Three foot wide. You didn't have 17 people at a time cross, slamming through there. Like they're going to be, you know, trying to get in the dome tonight to watch that game. Huh, three foot wide. That's why in the book it says, wide is the gate, but narrow is the door to what? I think it goes on to say to salvation. And it says the way, the truth, and the life. And the life. And you got all these apostasies on either side of this thing. See, leading up to Yahweh Elohim. Now, it says many are chosen, and many people came into this court roundabout, right? Mm -hmm. But how many people went up in the air? How many people went through that door? Mm -hmm. Not many. Not many at all. No. Not many at all. Those were the chosen. Do you understand? Yes. See, you have your examples back here in this, right there in that pattern. Wide is the gate, but narrow is the way. Matthew 7, 14. Beg your pardon? Matthew 7, 14. All right, let's get that. Thank you. Matthew 7, 14. Because narrow is the gate. Narrow is the gate. And hard is the way which leads unto life. And few there be that find it. And few there be That's there it. that find it. Mm-hmm. Or the chosen. Hmm. The chosen. You have to be the chosen. And he's the one who is doing the choosing. Right. See, you're not doing the, the selecting or the choosing. He's doing the choosing. It says, the chosen. He's doing the choosing. Go ahead. Read there in the scripture. Oh. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Read. To be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed. My goodness, we could spend an hour just on that. To be conformed to the image of his son. And I don't mean the way he looks when you just look at him. I mean these attributes. So that your soul converted by those very attributes 
takes on his very nature. Your nature is exactly the same as his. You're conformed to the images of, of his dear son. That's right. Read. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. For he's the firstborn. Read. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And he did foreknow way back in here. And predestinated way back in here. Read. And whom he called. And look, that doesn't mean to say there are not choices that are being made down through the purpose of Yahweh. But those choices are predetermined by what needs to be done in the purpose. His purpose or his volition is going to stand. That's right. And nothing's going to be in its way. And nothing's going to stop it. And nothing's going to change it. Read. And whom he called, them he also justified. And them he also justified or cleared of all what? Guilt. 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 You know what? I don't walk around with a guilty conscience anymore. Now that I'm not a Roman Catholic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I don't. I don't walk around with that guilty conscience anymore. I don't. And you know what? It's nice. And it's peaceful. Read. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If Elohim be for us, who can be against us? If Elohim be for us, Charles, who can be against us? Right? Now skip down to, uh, so I can get down here, skip, skip down to, Uh, 34. Romans 8 and 34. Who is he that condemneth? Is it the Messiah that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Elohim, who also maketh intercession for us? See, it talks in there about condemning and all this and that, and, and just leave the condemning up to Yahweh Elohim. Leave the condemning up to Yahshua. Yeah. Leave it up to him. Because since he is justice, That's right. it's going to take care of everybody. Yes. And you don't have to worry about it. And that should be a comfort to you. Jeez, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. Go ahead. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahshua? Now this, the end of this is just... Touching. Pretty. Mm -hmm. It's really something that, it's almost like David wrote it in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a song. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahshua? Read. Shall tribulation or distress? Shall tribulation or distress? Or Almost everybody in here has been through some kind of tribulation or distress. Right. Everybody. You know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, get ready. <laughs> Read. Or persecution, or persecution, famine. persecution. Who? <laughs> uh, or famine, 
or nakedness? I, I, I don't know about you. I cannot be intimidated. I can't. After you stand in L.A. <laughs> and stand in front of Dr. Harris and all of the, the bigwigs right and sitting in the front row, and they're all scowling at you, and there's 600 people in the room, and almost all of them do not want to hear what you're saying. After that, you can't be intimidated anymore. <laughs> and I, I'm serious. I mean, you can't. And my wife was there. Go ahead, read. Um, or persecution or famine. Famine, persecute, read. Or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Read. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For him that through him loved us. Through loved us. him. Through. Through. Through him. Him. Loved us. That loved us. Loved us. When we were yet unlovable. There. <laughs> Read. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh Elohim, which is in Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Isn't that pretty? I thank you very much for your patience. I hope that this article was stimulating in some small way and uh, all praise be to Yahshua the Messiah For our next speaker, I'd like to call on our visitor from um, Hamilton, Ontario, Dr. Lionel Van Arju. I wanted to pronounce it right. I hope I did. <laughs> You're doing great. Good evening to Syracuse. It's Hi. a pleasure to be Hi. here. Thank you for coming to class and not going to see the Orangemen play. Um, I didn't know there was a game. Uh, it was at the rest area on the throughway and people wearing the orange garb or whatever else. And Not that I don't like college sports or whatever else. Our college network is a little bit smaller. Anyway, um, Rick, Rick made this really challenging to explain these kinds of words and so forth. I'm just teasing, but uh, I can't do it. And thank you for finding those articles or for you, the spirit in you putting that or finding those articles and so forth, right? You know, those things are out there for us to enjoy and learn from, right? Yes. You know, you, you go to the grocery store and there's the beautiful National Geographic covers and so forth, and some of them are compelling. And, and that one is the Arctic, Arctic, and it talks about DNA and so forth. So let me start here. Love and peace from the brethren in Tampa, where I was on Sunday. Uh, sorry, yep, yeah, last week. So I had to say hi to Scott. Uh, so your sister says hi. You know, I know she probably emailed you beforehand uh, from, from Lisa in the Tampa class, from the Hamilton class, from the Buffalo group. We had a Buffalo class today from 11 to 1 at the Walden Gallery and Mall every second week. And the fine folks in Hamilton, uh, which I'll be racing back to fire it up again early tomorrow morning and have class there at 11. So uh, I'm not a rock star or superstar. I don't have a tour bus outside. I'm just doing these things because at the end of the day, it's important to come to class. I figured after Buffalo, after I had lunch with Bonnie and, and, and Robin Faulkner and, and Norm Jr., I thought, well, I could go home, have a nap on my couch, think about cutting my grass, and then that, they call it my Saturday. I thought, no, I'm two and, a, two and a quarter away from here. 
you know, let's come spend some time with you guys again. So at the end of the day, Hamilton class in the last two weeks since I've been, in the last three weeks since I've been here has gotten a little bit smaller. We lost a good soldier in Yash the Messiah. Dr. Roy Gattashaw passed away mm. at 83. Cancer took him. And he fought and uh, he held on to the, the truth, you know, and so forth. And it was a pleasure to uh, have him in our class and grateful that, uh, that he was provided to us as, as a fellow student in the gospel. We'll miss him, obviously, and, uh, and, uh, and so forth. But the three of us will carry on. In a couple weeks' time, you're all welcome to come up to Hamilton if you like. We're having an event on the 18th of October. Um, some of you are coming. Looking forward to those that can come. And I get that some money-wise, time-wise, travel-wise, not everyone could be there. And really just figured it's not about the destination. It's really about an opportunity to get together. Right. You know, and that's, that's all it is really. It's, again, these same, it's pretty much the theme of the class for trying to pick a theme is the, is the same section except for a little bit further down the pretty part that rick was talking about you know and um it's really the purpose of that is to get together with with the brethren and when you come to class you you feel energized and as the prayer said you get you know bring us a couple more things mm -hmm. because you need a couple of more of those things to carry on it's not you know it's not trivia where how oh, i learned who wrote this song back in 65 or whatever no you need these things for your your spiritual life to help learn and discern what is right and what's wrong to deal with that adversary who's coming after you and i and all of us to try and separate from the love of the messiah right he's coming hard and he's you know he's he's done with the world he's coming after those people that have known that know something may always purpose and plan and he's going to come at you in different ways not just school wise in your personal life as rick said you know hey if you're having a tribulation it's coming get ready for it and if you've already had tribulation don't think it's done you're getting more right he's going to try you and try you and try you continually because why it's his will to do that so you know anyway it's important to get together when you can you know when i was in florida or in a couple in a month or a bit or when i go to albuquerque you're blessed to go there yeah you look forward to those bigger events but but the simple coming to class is just as important as the bigger event because not everyone go to the big big event and so forth so anytime you can get together in the mouth of two or two or three witnesses Right? Let, let a thing be obviously established, but also those witnesses and to refresh and recharge each other. Let's go over to, I don't know exactly where I'm going to go from where Rick started necessarily, but we'll just see what happens and we'll go to Romans uh, 6, or sorry, Romans 9 and uh, 15. Romans 9 and 15. Yep. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And who's he? It's Yahweh said unto Moses. It's Yahweh Elohim said unto Moses, I'll have mercy upon whom I'll have mercy. And as a previous vessel was speaking and talking about, let Yahweh Yahshua be the judge. Right? This is just confirming what Rick had just talked about up here, that he will have mercy upon whom he has mercy. That's right. Don't you, let it go. Don't worry about these things. Just make sure that your house is in order. We're all accountable individually. You may love the person on your left or right or six rows over or whatever else or someone else somewhere, but he's got it in his control. He will have mercy upon whom he have mercy. Read on. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And that's who you have compassion on. You, hey, be supportive and empathetic and, and support each other, absolutely. But yeah, he's going to have compassion on whom you have compassion. And there'll be some, though, that he will not have compassion on. There's some that will have sinned in, in, in ignorance because they didn't know. And there's other ones, well, you know, you've, you've, you've done it, or sorry, sin, um, sin because they didn't know. And there's other ones that, that sinned because, and they did it intentionally, they're ignorant, ign ignorantly. To try and clarify that. Okay, read on. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh Elohim that showeth He's mercy. the one that provides the mercy. It doesn't matter what you do, how much you know, it's all, what, all those bits and pieces, it's his will. It's always going to be done. And, and in class today in Buffalo, we spent some time talking, or some of those previous speakers, I didn't speak in Buffalo. Well, thank you very much. So we, we spent some time talking about Abraham and Isaac. You know, and, uh, and other things, of course, about the name of Yahweh, because, you know, those things are always important. As much as, you know, as a kid growing up in Hamilton, as a, as a little boy, it seemed like the other day, every other lecture, every other scripture lesson was Exodus 3. So you'd know about the Hebuzites and the Jebusites so often that you'd kind of, you know, you'd try and figure out how to spell them or try and imagine what they looked like. Or you knew the whole bits and pieces in there and so forth. But you can never get enough of that stuff because it's important because that name describes his purpose. He who exists or who he wills to be, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's important. I will be what I will to be. 
It's he's doing his will just by nature of Ayah Rashaiah. He's declaring that manifestly when he was over here at the burning bush. I will be what I will to be. So you can't, you know, you may think you have an idea what that will will be, but at the end of the day, he's going to do his will. Jonah, Jonah wanted to go uh, in a different direction. Go, hey, and he started in a different direction. He's on the boat sleeping away, and the boat's rocking and so forth, and the crew members are freaking out. And you can, you know, check out the book and the story. But he was in that fish, that whale, whatever, you know, in that specially prepared ended thing in the water and put to where he was supposed to go. That, the book tells me that. I can leave that where that is. Over here with, with Abraham, he was his. Sarah was dead, in the sense, from the standpoint of having children, and yet there was a promise given to Abraham. Right. Hey, he went and had a, had a child with Hagar. Isn't that the promised child? <laughs> That's not with his wife, right? That, right? You know, his will, those are still receive a, recipients of the promise later on, because to his seed, right? He, maybe he thought that was the way to do it. Whatever. You can obviously spend more time reading that piece of it. But out of that dead state, there's life. Not just once. And further on, Let's let's do this. Let's go to Isaiah, let's go to uh, Genesis. Genesis 22, please, and start at one. Somehow we'll loop loop around here with the time we have. Genesis 22 and one, and it came to pass after these things that Elohim did test Abraham and said unto him, See, Abraham, it, so, and he said, Behold, here I am. Yeah. And so if we can get the dictionary out and pull, look up the word justify. And the justified is that, you know, it's an after fact to the past tense that you've already passed the justification. You've been justifying, and you've justified, you've passed the test or proven and gone through that process, right? It's further down the line. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But the justification piece of it, he's going to, Yahweh's going to try Abram here. And these charts give witness in the fact that all these, all these souls all down the line are all tested. Saul was tested, Peter was tested, you know, in Acts 4, you read about it, it's beautiful, you know, they declare the name of Yahshua the Messiah and the power there, but they're threatened. And what did they say? We can't say anything but we've, we've seen and heard. That's right, they were tested, right? They, if they had a chance to change their story, it was there. Well, we'll, we'll take the softer road or, or whatever. No, we saw, we heard, we are assured of those things. And we can't say anything else but what we've been assured of. That's that confidence that you receive, that they receive through that Holy Spirit, which is the name of Yahshua the Messiah, the Holy Spirit in or out of the physical body, as the moderator so graciously tells you, every class is Yahshua. It's not Rick Trivison, it's not Lionel Vemajou, it's not Kinley or Harris, it's the name of Yahshua. Our Dean, Dr. Channer, would, would say hi, he's, not, he's 83, he's not likely to travel as much as I might, but you know, he's not my savior. He's my dean. I, I love him. I've, I've known him since I was five years old. But at the end of the day, he's not my savior. Right. Yahshua is my savior. Okay? Justify. Justify. To prove or show to be to just. To prove. This school, A.C. Kinley, had a, when, he had a, when he received a divine vision revelation, he said, I had a divine vision revelation from Yahweh. Don't believe me. Make me prove it. Right? And he went out and he went and he proved it. And we as recipients, young or old or new in class, in class a long time, we were recipients of some of that proof through him. When you look in the textbook and transcripts, some of us maybe may have been eyewitnesses to him. I can't speak for everyone here. I was, I was like five or something or eight years old at the 75 convention running around. So I was, you know, if he was there, it didn't mean anything to me in that regard. But some people might be eyewitnesses to him and what he taught and so forth. But you have it also in transcript and you have it in textbook and you have it in pamphlets. You know, you may have it in your basement on reel to reel. But he said, make me prove it. Right. And that word proof is important. Continually prove. That's how you separate what's false and what's true and the world is Yahweh is not the author of confusion Satan is the author of confusion because he'll turn his multitude of houses against uh, and his whole faction of demons against each other right. to get you looking over there at all the conf confusion but Yahweh is not the author of confusion right. read on to prove or show to be just to vindicate to pronounce free from guilt yeah. or blame, to absolve. To free of guilt and blame, and obviously it ties into Yahshua the Messiah, of course, taking away the law of sin and death and the carnal ordinances and so forth, but also it had to be proven to see whether they're worthy or not. When, when, Judas, when, when Judas had deceived Yahshua the Messiah, they got together and they drew lots and they selected Matthias. 
Yahweh yeah, wasn't interested in Matthias. They did that. One, one betrayed Messiah. Let's, we're missing one. Let's go pick lots. You know, I, and I'm adding to the story in a sense. So you have to look at it detailed line by line and, and, you know, and so forth. But basically they drew lots and selected somebody to replace the one that betrayed Yahshua the Messiah. But, but Yahweh's plan was to bring Saul in. How better to show an example of metamorphosis and change of bringing the one that was accusing and killing the brethren to change him and bring him in to then, to then have to be accepted by those, you know, the blood's on his hands, and yet you've got to love him equally, without holding back, with forgiveness, right? And yet he killed your brother. Because what's the most important thing? That's having that Holy Spirit in you. That's why we come to these classes and so forth. Not to dispense the Holy Spirit to each other, to share the things you come to know and understand. And with that, yeah, we provide the increase. Sometimes we'll get a little bit here, and sometimes we'll get some other stuff. Or maybe we've heard some things before. We Exodus 3 was the, was the scripture lesson over in Buffalo this, this morning. It was beautiful. I, I walked out of there with two pages of notes. And yet I heard that scripture many, many times. Now, there's obviously different directions that they went with building that and so forth. But that's, that's important. So anyway, anyway so he, he had to prove Abraham. Yes. Okay? He did it before, obviously, with the seed and so forth. But now he's got a son that's from his wife. Okay, read on. Genesis 22 and 2. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. Take Yahweh says to him, take your son, your only son. Okay. Now, he had a son as well with Ishmael, but his only son through the promise, okay? One's through promise, and one's, okay? All right, that's a whole different discourse, and so forth. We'll focus on this now, okay? Read on. Whom thou lovest. Whom thou lovest. So you take someone you love, your son that's given to you to promise, to the loins of your wife who was at a dead womb, and you're an old guy. Yahweh's causing a resurrection there, Okay. Read on. And get thee into the land of Moriah, yep. and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Yep. Don't just go anywhere. He's telling you, go that Moriah, and he's not going to tell you anywhere in Moriah, just you, that you pick the to that mountain that I tell you to go to. Right. Right? He's giving the clear instructions. It's now it's up to Abraham to be obedient or disobey. Basically, he's going to get them there anyway, because that's Yahweh's will. He's going to, you know, he's going to get hit. He's going to leave the 99 sheep to get that one. Right? So, who's getting that one? We're not going to rally around together and go get that one and go rescue somebody from Cortland or from Binghamton or Johnson City or, you know, as an example, being, you know, using some New York State geography for you. No, he's going to work his will and he's going to bring that one to where he's going to do. Read on. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and yep. saddled his ass. And took two of his young men with him, Isaac his son, and cut the wood for the burnt yep. offering, rose up, and went unto the place of which Elohim had told him. So he gets up, and he started on his way to obedient. And he's not going there with just his son, he's going with two witnesses. It's important. You always got to have those witnesses, right? They, you know, because they're going to live, go, when they go back, they're going to tell the story too to some other people and down the line and so forth. You got to have the law and the prophets, all those witnesses and so forth. Read on. Then, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. He's be, his son's be dead. He's going off to sacrifice his son in a place, you know, that you love. And three days later, he, his son's dead in his head for three days. Mm -hmm. The book tells me that, right? You can sort it out for yourself, you know, yeah. audio and TV land or whatever, yeah. right? For three days, he's traveling. He's going to have to kill the son that he loves. Yeah. Not three minutes, not three seconds, three days. Read on. Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So you, you stay here with, with, the, with the donkey, the ass, whatever. Stay here with the creature. Me and my son are going to take off, and we're going to come back again. So he knows he's going to come back again. Right. But, and how does he know that? Because Yahweh, he knew him as El Shaddai, the Almighty Provider. He provided him with a son when his wife was at a dead womb. You know, he's providing. He's going to go. He's got that faith to carry on and go about his task and come back again. So he doesn't just go around the corner and come back again. He's going to be tried. Yeah. Read on. 
Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of yep. them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. Yep. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where, where, where's the, where's the uh, burnt offering? I'm sure that was running through his mind all along. We're going to offer sacrifice. He's going to die. Where are we going? I'm sure he just didn't tell him there, you know, what he's going to do. You were told, wait, hey, son, come with me. We're going to go offer sacrifice unto Yahweh, whatever he would have said to him, right? Moses wrote this as you saw it in Divine Vision Revelation. So, you know, he gives enough, it gives us plenty enough to chew on, plenty of nuts, of nuts to get work on our understanding and so forth as he provides the increase, right? Yeah. So, you know, so, hey, listen, Yahweh's going to provide. Read on. Abraham said, my son, Elohim will provide himself a lamb. For a burnt offering. He's so they went, both of them he's, together. He's going to provide himself a lamb. There's a lamb over here. He's going to provide himself a lamb as a burnt offering. But then still they went on. They didn't go looking for the lamb in the woods. Right. To go find the lamb. Yeah, I was going to provide a lamb. Let's start looking. Nope, we're going to carry on and go on our mission. We've been told to do something. We're going to do it. Read on. They came to the place which Elohim had told him of. Yep. And Abraham built an, offer, an altar there. And laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. It's important to know they went to the place they were told to go. That speaks to obedience. When, you know, when Moses received a divine vision over here, build a tabernacle. Make sure that you make it exactly like it. And we go when new people come in, and we talk about the pattern or old people, whatever else. Make sure you make it exactly like you saw on the mount at the beginning of Exodus, and so so, and at the end of the verse. You know, you go to those and and make it. Make sure you make it exactly. When you have a vision, you have to do exactly. When the founder received a divine vision revelation, he had an incredible duty and responsibility to present everything that he had received to present to the people. Because he received in a vision. I haven't had a divine vision revelation. I can't speak for anyone else over here in the, in the group here and so forth. I'm just exceedingly grateful to be a recipient of learning anything about Yahweh's purpose and plan through His grace and His mercy. Read on. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. There you go. Now he's still, he's got the knife. He's not getting the knife and looking around for the lamb. Read on. The angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. He has to be called. The angel, angel of Elohim. He's calling out to him. Hey, here, you know, he's about to go take the knife and strike to his son. Strike him. Because he's being obedient. Yahweh giveth, he taketh away, you know, he provideth, you know, and the sacrifice is provided and so forth. You know, at the end of the day with all these things, you know, I, I just, predestination is a hot topic in various circles and so forth. And, you know, I, things I don't know, I leave alone, give or take. And at the end of the day, you go back in the book and see what the book has to say. You know, that's my understanding. That's how I was raised and so forth. And, you know, if you don't understand some stuff, well, you, you know, you stick to the stuff you do know. You know, and... The story just tells me, hey, he knew that he was going to come back again, but he's still going to be pushed right to the limit because his soul needs to be proved and tried. And after he's tried, he's, you know, it was accounted unto them for righteousness because what do you see in this chart here? Gosh, the Messiah uh, didn't rise on his own as a quickening spirit. There's those sons right here painted on the chart and on the chart over here and all down the line. Why? How did they rise? They didn't receive the Holy Spirit, but it was accounted to them for righteousness. For what? For being obedient to what they were given to go do. And there they are. And they went into Jerusalem and were saw by the multitude that were there and so forth. And the book can explain that to you better than I can. But it's for his purpose and his will as those witnesses. And Yahshua the Messiah there, he had a quickening spirit and dwelt with them for 40 days and so forth. And has to get to that point in time. Well, he's out there fulfilling, right? And he's fulfilling. Oh, you know, they came to him looking for a sign. He said, no sign shall I give you but the sign of Jonah. Right? Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 16 and 5. You know, it, it's, it's important to know things in this world, and it's not from a trivia standpoint by any means. Um, you know, I was blessed this week, Wednesday, to join Lenore Allen up in Montreal, the Montreal class there. She wanted to go. She has family there. She has family everywhere. Um, you know, so it's like, well, I, I, I work in transportation. I got drivers out there. Let me kind of go join, and join her. I, got, I was grateful to be a witness and so forth. And she was called as the first speaker and certainly... It's been, a, you know, it's been a lot of time focusing on the names here, you know, that these are important. When we all came to class, if there's a new person walking in off the back street coming through the doorway here, 
and I didn't know they're new or not or whatever else, somehow we would find our way looking up Exodus 3.15 and work our way through there. Whether this class or whenever your other class is or any other event or in Hamilton that was on the street access, if someone comes in tomorrow morning, we didn't invite them or they're welcome because the door's there. Come on in, right? We're going to work our way over to those names. Right. And we're going to spend a lot of time there because people say, you want to know what God's name is? You want to know what the Lord's name is? It's right there on the chart so you can know it. It's important to know that name. Mm -hmm. You know? And even more, so the name of Yahshua, this is again, working His will. His will, Yahweh, He, you know, I will be what I will to be. Yeah, here He is, He's working that manifestation of His power. Yahweh, salva, Yah, Yahshua is Yahweh's salvation, right? He's demonstrating what He's doing through His Son. There He was. He's instituted and He fulfilled. Provide us an opportunity. Oh, you know, anyway, it was a pleasure to go there to Montreal to be a witness, for the most part, to the discourse that Lenora and the, the, the second speaker, or the first speaker after her, basically said, hey, I have no problem with what you had to say. You're absolutely right. But then gradually, worked the way around and to say, hey, I, I sat at the feet of Dr. Harris. And it was a much peaceful, beautiful feeling, they said. Hey, I'm not mocking their feeling or, or so forth to make fun of other people, because that's what they felt. They felt tremendous peace there. But this school was established as a result of divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Kiffer Kinley. So if you want to enjoy the gospel, you got, you got to stay in the gospel. And that gospel was dispensed to him, and he dispensed it. It's not the gospel of Dr. Channer or Dr. Trevison or whatever, Dean or, 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 or Bryant or Harris or somebody else. It's the because they received the divine vision revelation. When the founder received the divine vision revelation, hey, that's what Moses saw, and we believed it. Why? Because he took us into the book and showed us what Moses saw. We always had a book, but we didn't understand it. Hmm. You, know, you know, some Catholic churches don't have Bibles. They got the, you know the Catechism or other things, but some churches have Bibles and so forth. A very popular book out in the earth plane and so forth. You had it, but you didn't know how to read it. You didn't know how to understand it because that spirit has to provide that understanding for you. But these things are, are uh, these things are important. At the end of the day, some schools want to, some schools in the world want to say that A.C. Kinley is their savior, even after a discourse explaining that the name of you have no other name will be saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And you can go to the seventh theme and insert well where it says name or Yahshua insert the word attribute or this and that. <laughs> you can do all kinds of funny things in certain names, but that man name has a definition and a characteristics and action associated with it. Yeah. You don't want to be, at the end of this age, dead yeah. in that lake of fire. Right. You know. Funny. Anyway, uh, there's a little bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to share that these things are really important because it's easy in these schools sometimes to take for granted what you know and carry on with something else and not pay attention to those things you received years and years ago. It's important. We're not here to worship a man. Hey, as a 12, 13-year-old kid, I, I distinctly remember walking around at some New York State picnics with some cheap little ghetto blaster on my shoulder. No one was looking at me and listening to me necessarily. I was playing like a Rick Trevison tape or a Dennis Volpe tape and stuff like that. He's, he's a guy like me. He puts his pants on like me, right? Just a guy, you know? But the spirit in a man is different. I'm just saying it from the standpoint of a kid, you know, hey, walk around this tape, think, hey, look at me, you know, you know, enjoy the picnic, Lionel. Enjoy... You know, the speakers are on the floor there and you listen to the tape later on or whatever else. You know, it's just mm -hmm. kind of funny. I probably still have the cassette tape somewhere, Rick. <laughs> so, you know, my, my all kinds of cassettes and all kinds of old things. But it's not about worshiping the man. It's never about worshiping the man. No. Right? Uh, right? Samuel 13, or sorry, 16 and 5. 16, for Samuel 16 and 5. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto... Yahweh, sanctify yep. yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons yep. and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely Yahweh's anointed is before him. But Yahweh said unto Samuel, Look not unto his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Yeah. For Yahweh seeth not as man seeth. That's right. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but Yahweh looketh on the heart. See, Yahweh looketh on the heart. He doesn't look on the outward appearance. Man looks at the outward appearance and so forth most often than not, right? That's why most of the magazines you see at the store either have a pretty dude on the front or a pretty lady on the front. 
Not all, but a lot of them do. Yes. Or if it's a food magazine, it's got some really good looking food on the front. It's not something that I cooked that I scooped out on the plate. You're not going to sell a lot of magazines, right? No one's going to buy the back or any of the magazine that features my craft dinner recipe on the front, which is the same as the box, except for I added some peppers, Tabasco sauce. No one's going to buy that one. They want the pretty one. And that goes all the way back in the angelic. They wanted the pretty one. That's right. They wanted that adversary. They didn't want Yash the Messiah. He was comely. There's nothing. And when they came to where is he? You know, the one they got, he's got a kiss, right? That's the one. They couldn't pick him out of a crowd. <laughs> right. You know, because they were looking at the outside. But if they would have been still and listened, they, you know, if they were his sheep, they would have heard his voice. Right. But those that came to kill him, they're not hearing his voice. They're out to kill him. Why? Again, working Yahweh's will and his purpose. He didn't come on the earth plane to live for hundreds of years and have a big house and have big barbecue parties. and you know It wasn't part of his plan. It's to preach the gospel, to fulfill. It'd be that quickening spirit to get you to Pentecost. Pentecost back here, not in 1994, as I heard on Wednesday. Pentecost back here. It's on this chart here. It's on this chart over here. It's long before I was born. And long before any of us were born, and long before, you know, back there was the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out, and seven years later under the Gentiles. You could do all kinds of funky math and look at 1904. At the end of the day, Pentecost was poured back there, because at the end of the day, those boys paid a heavier price than any, anyone you or I have paid. Peter and James and John, all those boys. They all paid a heavy price. And you want to read about it? You read about the end of Hebrews there. We're talking destitute, sawn asunder in caves. That's, and then they had the Holy Spirit. You know, it's to have a life with abundance, but not abundance of the flesh, it's an abundance of the spirits. Okay, read on. First Sam 16 and 8. Then Jesse called Ebenab and made him pass before Samuel. Jump and down, if you don't mind, to where you could, you know. He, he's, got, he's gone through all the boys, okay. you know, basically, but there's one boy that isn't, hasn't come through there yet. Okay. Uh, 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Yahweh have not chosen me. See, you think seven sons, come on. How, how could you not have given they're the finest of my sons? Gave you my best offering. Read on. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Hmm. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. See, he held them back. Mm uh hmm. He, he held the youngest back. Yep. He gave the best of what he thought was the best. At right. the end of the day, yeah, yeah, he discerns the spirit and intent and so forth. Right. The one that Our, turned the sheep, it's all part of his purpose and plan. He held him back, but oh, he wants that one. Doesn't want the other seven handsome, strong, whatever, you know, yeah. all, all American, all, all Israeli, whatever, boys. He doesn't want all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm done with that there. Let's go over to Hebrews 4 and 12. And then there's a transcript that they distributed. Yep. Yeah, that's the faith transcript. I know Rick was walking around at the beginning of this class here. And uh, from 1966, right? Uh, I think 65. it is. 65. 65, thank yep. you. All right. So, yep, beautiful. And then if you want to... Uh, there we go. Start... Start here. Okay. Now, unfortunately, it's it's printed in a manner where the pages aren't numbered. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry I didn't print it, and it's not to lay fault or blame to the people that did print it, the the, the folks who organized Orlando. It's just for reference, you got to go look for this line or two yourself in, in the transcript and check it out. Okay? So this is the faith lecture given by Dr. Kinley, February 14th, 1965. Yep. And this is like. Oh, Near the it's back. Only like looks like two or three pages from the very yep. end of the transcript. Thank you. There's other sections there I would have read more, but I'm, I'm not for time and so forth. And, and read at your own leisure. You can read the whole thing, but sometimes a little bit here, a little bit there may stand out to you. Right. And sometimes the whole thing will knock you on your backside, right? And you got to read the whole. You know, I, read, I was flying to Tampa last week. I thought, well, I was sitting in my bag for a while. I haven't read it. You know, I'm on the plane. I, it was a cheap flight. They had no entertainment, and I have no music on my phone, so. I was grateful to have the chance to pull it out. Read on. This is Dr. Kinley speaking. Now then, here you come up. Then thou will say then, well, they were broken off so I could be grafted in. Okay, stop. So he's speaking about the wild, the, the natural olive tree, um, right? Yes. Yeah, all of, yeah, and then some of those natural branches of those Jews there and so forth, right? Yeah. Right? They, you know, they were there, you know, they're the natural ones because they received the 
the law over here mm -hmm. from Moses. It wasn't given to the Philistines and all those other people. It wasn't given to them. Right. So, you know, the, the natural branches, but some of those branches were broken off. You can read about it in Romans 11 and so forth. But that wild olive tree, which is the Gentiles, which is you and I, and, and before us and so on, have an opportunity to be grafted in. So recap that, that little small section. Sure. So Dr. Kinley saying, now then, here you come up. Then thou will say then, well, they were broken off so I could be grafted in. Yeah, here are the wild olive, wild branch. Say, they were broken off so I could be in. Right. Look at me. No, that's not what you should be saying. Right? If they got broken off, leave it alone. You can't, you know, that's what it is. Be grateful that you are, you are. somewhere. Yeah. And not just somewhere, someplace special grafted in. And be grateful for that and focus on that exclusively. Not worry about the Joneses and how they broke, got broken off and they got broken off for me so I could have a, a chance in that tree. Right. He, he picked you. He did the calling. He put you there. He, he grafted you and you didn't grab your, graft yourself in. And that's it. Yeah. And just be grateful. Read on. Just got to throw away now. Told you not to boast against the natural branches. Don't boast against them. Hey, they got knocked off for me. That that's those in that school got wiped out for me, so I could learn something. And it's a challenge, right? Because sometimes it's easy for me in my life to look at it and say, "Hey, my parents were brought from Holland. That was you know whatever after the war, and brought over to Canada, and then they, you know I came to class for my you know, and they brought me in, and you know they came to class so I could." And they the fellow did, or did something different or whatever else they did so that I could... I'm just got to be grateful where I am. Right. And grateful for what he's given me to understand. Because mm -hmm. he could take it away. Right. There's all kinds of nasty diseases and illnesses like Alzheimer's that you forget what you knew. You know, early stages, uh, you know, other people can speak much better of that. You know, I, my car keys were here and they're not here. You don't know where your car keys are. But then it comes back to you. And then as you get older and older, I guess you just don't remember anything. Who you are, what your name is. You know, right. that's horrible. It's horrible. Read on. Not to boast against the natural branches like the devil is doing over yonder in the Vatican. Get yep. the point? Now, I'm, I'm done with that piece. There's all, much more there. But if you had an old man, new man chart and so forth, when the Mitch's chart, you know, you'd probably see boasting as one of the traits on there, you know, right? Bo or probably would, or vanity, or all those things. You want to leave those things alone. Hebrews 4 and 12, please. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of Elohim is sharp and powerful. Wait a minute. Is yeah. quick. Yep. And powerful. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You have all kinds of surgical lasers that can do all kinds of stuff and fix your eyes and cut out things that are messed up with yourself and so forth. Mm -hmm. But that word of Elohim is able to join, separate spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Read that, recap that part of it. Asunder, um, to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's right. He knows. He Listen, he, he hated Esau, right? Yeah. Before Esau was born. That Who decides that? He did. Mm. For his purpose and plan, he did that. Okay. He knows your thoughts and intentions before you know what your thoughts and intentions are. How do I know that? Because Saul's writing about that, and Saul's got the Holy Spirit, and, 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 his, and he was proven and justified, and then uh, later on glorified. And even when he was glorified with the Holy Spirit, what's he doing there when he's in exile? He's speaking, those people came to see him morning to night about Yahshua the Messiah and going back into Moses, and going back in Law and the Prophets. Right. Not going off in his own wisdom, his own book, hey, this is my new book I wrote. This, no, <laughs> he's sticking to the book, and because those people that come to him with what tools they have. The founder would say, listen, you got a Bible, I got a Bible here, you got a Bible over there. Right. Yeah. Open it up. You know? Right. Use the tools. Sometimes you got to work at it, and sometimes you got to reason together and so forth, you know? But you, but the tools are the tools. Use the resources you have. Yeah, man's messed up a couple things in the book, give or take, for sure. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there's a, with many witnesses at the beginning, at the end, and in creation and so forth that are going to take care of any kind of misinterpolations and extrapolations and so forth. But the, he, they decide to, your thoughts and intentions. He can split them all up. He knows what it is. You see it all the time. You know, you know, people come off really nice and wonderful and so forth. But man, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, they got swindled out of all kinds of money. 
or whatever else. Or relationship-wise, you meet somebody who's really great, and then you move along, and all of a sudden, man, that person was really actually horrible. They had a mission. They were on a mission. Yeah. And that mission wasn't to lift you up. It was to lift themselves up in the guise of lifting you up, or whatever it is. Right, That's yeah. a, right. diff all kinds of different things there. Let's go to Second Test. Uh, Second Thessalonians. Um, actually, let's go. Let's go to. Well, we'll go to Second Thessalonians. Flip over there. But let's go to Second Timothy. Okay. Uh, verse chapter two. Second Timothy two. And we're going to go to, and we're going to go right to uh, 14. 2 Timothy... Uh, 4, and, sorry, my apologies. I've got to gotta give the chapter, don't I? It's helpful. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 14. Ah. 2 Timothy 4 and 14. Yep. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Uh, my apologies. Uh, 1 no. Timothy, my apologies. And they'll also want to go to 2 Timothy 3 as well. But let's finish with 1 Timothy 4 and 14. Down. 1 Timothy 4 and 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. Actually, well, don't, don't neglect that gift. It's actually, I'm, I'm being, I'm all over the map here. My apologies. I'm looking for 2 Timothy 2 and uh, 23. See, sometimes it takes a bit. That's why, you know, it's, don't have all these things, things wired. We're going to make mistakes sometimes and look for the wrong scriptures and so forth. And there's all kinds of, you can, you can read the whole book cover to cover in any given class and <laughs> still find more things to talk about because, you know, anyway. But. 2 Timothy 2 and 23. Thank you. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. Yeah, where does strife come from? Yeah, I was not the author of confusion. Right. Strife, you know, now at the end of the day, sometimes it doesn't mean that if you don't understand something right away, you got to take it like that fish taking the hook. you got to, you know, challenge. And you have to reason together. It, Andy Verkuteren, when he was in, our, in our Unity in the Eye event or in Northside, would say, hey, listen, he came from Green Bay to Rochester because he was coming to rescue his brother. Right? right? That's heard this said. I'm not preaching Andy. I'm using it as an example, okay? So he went there to preach to his brother. And lo and behold, you know, <laughs> he was trying to come to get him out of the school. Right. I've heard him say. And lo and behold, yeah. his, it was his will to come down and get his brother out of the school because either family or told him or whatever else. He could speak better than that, obviously, because I'm just hearing the story that he shared. But saw the people, you know. But lo and behold, yeah. that spirit provided increase in him. He wasn't taking his brother out. Right. He, he, was, he was sent there for that reason to be brought in. Norm Mc Jr., we, we saw him this afternoon at the Buffalo class. He hadn't seen him in a while. Grateful to have him pop in. And he was talking, hey, he was, he was fighting this gospel tooth and nail. And Bob, you know, his dad, Norm Sr., you know, it's like, hey, man, how'd you get in this gospel? How'd you stick to it? Out in the ice, out in the lake, ice fishing. And he couldn't get away. And it would be relentless. Boom, 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 you know. Beat it into him, as it were, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't want to have anything to do with it. And lo and behold, you know, it's got to be tried and be challenged that way. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but you don't want to have that strife. When there's an issue, you don't understand stuff. You know, we, we had a problem in our class. You know, three or four people. How could you have a problem in a class of three or four people? <laughs> Sorry, how could it be? Roy got a show recently passed. He come in the time. Rod's got a problem with me. Rod's got a problem. He doesn't say hi to me. He doesn't like me. Okay, Roy. Well, you know. And then you dig into the story and you understand that there, you know, Roy, Rod does it. Rod loves you. It's not that he hates you. He has a hearing issue on his left ear and he sits well in the room. And when you come in, that's his left side. He can't hear you coming in to say hi to you. I just use a simple example to see how people get worked up on different things. Like, oh, he's got a problem with it. He doesn't like me. Not, he, he loves you. We need you here. Not just for numbers. We need you here. He can't hear you coming in. Right. But if you have that face-to-face -face conversation, then you would learn to understand that he has a hearing issue. He can't hear that great with that one side. Right. Then it's different. Then the issue, you've reasoned together rather than run off with your preconceived ideas that somebody doesn't like you or someone hates you. Or someone. We have to love each other in the gospel. And if there's issues, we have to talk them out and explore them with the book. 
with the vision. And where's the vision? The founder said the vision is on the charts. Yeah. He put it in the textbook. If it's not on the charts, it's in the textbook, or it's m most times in both anyway, because there's the charts in the textbook and so forth. You reason with those things. We avoid foolish questions and so forth. But anyway, the more important part is going to read below that. 24. Yep. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive. We are servants of Yahweh. We're not here to serve. We have to earnestly contend for the common salvation, but that doesn't mean I'm going to knock over Charles to, to get, learn more or, or knock over somebody else, Pam, to, you know, or we have to earnestly contend yes. for the common salvation. But it's not a contending and a competition to, I know more than you, you got it wrong. No, let's lift up, let's edify the brethren, right? We got to move, <laughs> move up together, but we have to earnestly contend. With who? The adversary is trying to mess us up. We keep focused on Yahweh through Son Yahshua the Messiah, and we'll be okay if we leave ourselves out of it. But we have to earnestly contend. It's, it's kind of like being engaged to compete, as it were, but not competing. But you still have to, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like a paradox in a way, but you have to earnestly contend, but you're contending to basically, to, to make sure you pay attention, to understand that you check out these things that you hear. Don't take it for granted. Sometimes, someone, you know, in the Tampa class last week, someone wrote on the blackboard, um, you know, two plus two is four. You know, the first speaker, and it, nothing wrong with that. That's right. Some people would be easily satisfied. The founder said, make me believe it to your satisfaction. Some students will look at the two plus two and say, okay, uh, two plus two is four, and they're good with it. Other kids, they want the tactile. They want to touch four lemons, and they're going to count one lemon, two lemon, three lemon, four. They got to have that touch. Right. It's still four, two plus two lemons plus another group of, you know, it's four, but they need that physical touch to piece it all together. That's just... That's how they prove to their satisfaction. Other people are satisfied easily. Other people, man, they'll fight you tooth on nail on this stuff. And next thing you know, you find they're sitting in the class. How could that be, that person that fought so hard? You know? But you have to labor and labor and labor and so forth and be patient and able to explain things. Okay, read on. But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If Yahweh... Her adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. You can't bring them to the truth. Yahweh will give them a repentance, right? You have to be apt to teach. Now listen, I, I love the people in Montreal, the people in Toronto, and some of them will come to the event that we have in October in Hamilton because we're putting out the invitation. Whoever comes, comes. I'm grateful that some of the, 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 the sons exhibited by their behavior, conduct, those attributes and so forth are coming, you know? Right. That's great. And there's some other ones that are going to come that I'm not sure of. But that's not my place to judge. I don't know. Fully. Uh, the, you know, but they're coming. And just like in Job, you know, the sons of Elohim, the day, you know, where did he come from? <laughs> now, I'm not trying to suggest that, you know, and judge other people. But I'm just saying that, that some people may have had the gospel and understand the gospel and preach the gospel have gone off somewhere and to bring those people back you don't do it you just, but you have to be apt and humble to teach not beat them over the head you know mm -hmm. what did you receive when you first came into these schools oh right. ask questions engage people and so forth you're not trying to trip them up and so forth but you're trying to create an environment where you can have some reasoning dialogue you don't want to be polarized you want to stick to what you know and stand fast in that, but you don't want to be in a situation polarized. Your country is politically polarized. It is what it is, right? Politically polarized. Now, we have more parties than, than blue and red. We've got orange and green and some other parties and a, a party for a particular province. But we're polar. We're scattered. <laughs> We're very, all these things are polarized, but you want to be able to reason together and have those conversations and dialogue together where you can understand things. Now, the truth is the truth, and you can't compromise the truth, right? The children over here, when they, those that received the promise went over Canaan's land, they said, listen, you, you got the promised land. Go over and partake and enjoy it, but share the land. They weren't told to, but don't, share the land, but don't take on their customs. Right. Right? Being among them and, and so forth and whatever else, and you know, Stick to what you know. Don't take on their customs. Okay, but read on. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Yep, they're being captive and so forth. There's some people that say things that you could never have imagined. I, as a child, sure. You know, yeah. Was H.C. Kinley Yahshua? The spirit of, of Yahshua the Messiah was in him, for sure. But he said, listen, you know, H.C. Kinley is my earthly name. It's in the transcript for transcript, right? Even though the school was originally called the Kinley Institute, 
kids, you know, a son, the 40, you know, that got dropped out of there because it wasn't about him. But it's about the, the, the spirit that's in him. And he said, listen, I have the Holy Spirit. You should also have the Holy Spirit too. In various different transcripts and so forth. And I'm sorry, I don't have a list to, to, to rattle them all off. And I, and I should have. And I, but I don't at this particular time. But you hear people say things that, you know, that A.C. Kinley's our savior. How could that be? Uh, he's not. Because that, <laughs> it's not not because I say he's not. Because Peter, these boys here, they weren't singing praises to Kinley there when they were filling up a room with Jerusalem. They wouldn't have found him in the book, that name. Read on. Uh, yep. Do you want me to start in three? Yes, please. Um, 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This yep. know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Yep, jump down to five. Now there's a good list of things there, perilous times and so forth. And, you know, on, on, uh, when I think of disobedient to parents, uh, is, uh, when I was younger, I used to think that was my, or my mom and dad. Well, your parents are the law and the prophets. Disobedient to your law and the prophets, your schoolmaster, to lead you, you know, disobedient to those things. So it's easy to think physically and think about your parents and your, your, your mayor or whatever, all those things and stuff like that. But it's spiritual. Five? Five. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Yeah. Or, from in the, such or in the holy name, away. having a form of worship of Yahweh, a form of it. Yeah, they are Yahweh and so forth. Even some place, some churches in the world use Yahweh occasionally, smattered in here and there, oh, Yahweh, and then they go back to the Lord yeah. God and Jesus Christ and so forth. A little bit. But denying the power thereof from such turn away. But what's the power of Yahweh? I will be what I will to be. The power of Yahweh is Yahshua, Yahshua the Messiah. The Messiah. Res that resurrection. That's that, right. oh, you know, it swallowed up death. There he is. You know, adversary he puts guards and so forth here and so forth. But he's coming up, raising a quickening spirit. And he's going about his ministry. Hey, these are the words I speak and I say with you. After he rose, he wasn't changing the story. You know, oh, this is what I'm saying now. This is the new revelation. No, because they, they wouldn't recognize him. If he would be saying different things, the words I spake before, these are the words I spake when I was yet with you. You know, because they didn't understand. And before they received the Holy Spirit, he had to open their understanding to the Scriptures. Yeah. So they could check why. So they could check it out to see if it's so or not. And then who provides that increase? The Holy Spirit? Not themselves collectively saying, hey, listen, today we're going we're gonna to turn the lights on and off a couple times and, and do a couple, you know, sort of spin around a couple times and have the Holy Spirit. No. It came as a, like a muddy rushing wind. Yeah. And you had some storms here probably over the last couple of days. I see lots of leaves blowing around. We had some nice winds up by me. Like a mighty rushing wind. That, that sensation, that feeling of tremendous change and movement, uprooting things. Mm -hmm. But these folks are still grounded in the truth. That's the true root, right? Right. You know, they talk about branches and so forth, and, but it's that root, right? Let's go down to uh, uh, 13. Second Timothy 3.13. Yep. But evil men and sedu seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know, deceiving and being deceived, they're confusing themselves. You see it all the time when someone says a lie or something is misleading and they, they make a story on top of that one, it's even more misleading. It's a house of cards and it's a real mess and you can watch that on the news. But you know, uh, it's all those different things. One lie upon another lie upon another lie and so forth. What, evil work, workers. At the end of the right. day, we want to be in the world but not of the world anyway. doesn't matter whether you're a red voter or a blue voter or a yellow voter or communist party it doesn't matter because really at the end of the day you want to be a son that's what you need to be not a, a card carrying member of this party or that party yeah he doesn't he's not respect of persons but read on but 14. continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing yeah. of whom thou hast learned that. so continue those things which you've which you've learned and have been assured of how are you assured of what you've learned you did some investigation on your own checked it out Right. Or perhaps one of the speakers showed you something to encourage you to check out a particular area of something or whatever else, right? Mm -hmm. they, you carry on with what you've been assured of. Okay, read on. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahshua yep. the Messiah. The scriptures make you wise and hang on to those scriptures. Hang on to where you receive stuff and where you've been assured of. That it was be proven to you. Right. Don't just run off with something, oh, our dean said this, or, or this great person over here said that. You don't want to have blind faith. We need to have Yahshua the Messiah right. be made manifest in us, right? That Holy Spirit poured out. It was poured out back there on the day of Pentecost. 
to the Gentiles later on, seven years later, and it's still being poured out. Maybe we're getting a little bit here and there, you know, and that's okay. I'm, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to learn of Yahweh's purpose and plan as he, as he wills, and he could shut that off at any moment in time, and how we get to where we are, yeah, that, you know, just be grateful where we are, and stay focused on being on those things we're being assured of. We don't want to be tripped up. Right. Anyway, I, th I thank you. I, yeah, I'll need your help before all of a sudden I, I you know, kind of <laughs> cause myself some harm. Yeah. You want to mess up your hair either. Uh, I don't care about my hair. <laughs> but I have some. Of this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lion. For our next speaker, I'd like to call on Dr. Deborah. Good evening, Deb. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate the Scotty. previous speakers and um, like to go over to Acts, the second chapter, please. Um, yep. It's kind of where Lionel left us and. Um, it's a mystery to some. Some are still waiting for something to happen. Um, what we understand is that the day of Pentecost did come as Joshua said it would come and is still active and powerful going on today. Right. So we have a testimony that we have had a Pentecost and the fact that we have had a Pentecost makes us eyewitnesses in the sense of this vision and revelation. Now, we did not have the vision and revelation in a full scope all at once like Dr. Kinley had it, but certainly we have been brought up to the most holy place in reality to see Yahshua the Messiah and to understand something about what's going on. And like Lionel said, our mother and father being the law and the prophets, it tells you something about this Yahshua the Messiah. So when you find yourself in the same manner as Yahshua was, then you know for a certain that that spirit dwells within you. Like um, uh, Romans 8 and 26, please. It's very powerful to see him work in your life. It's very powerful to be testifying and giving a testimony of the things that he's done. And we come down here to give the praise to Yahshua. And every time we talk about him, we understand he's within us. He's our savior. He's our comfort. He's our creator. He's all things to us. And we understand that. We didn't have that. We were barren. We were desolate. We were talking about that on Wednesday night. And Lionel was talking about it, too, about Abraham and Isaac. Right. And, you know, talking about what the word barren means. And it's desolate. Right. And there is nothing profitable or beneficial about something that is barren in comparison to, like, an oasis or some kind of a... Um, uh, Water hole or plentiful or profitable for you know life and drinking and and being able to sustain yourself. Go ahead, Scott. Romans eight and twenty six. Yes. Likewise, the Spirit also mm -hmm. helpeth our infirmities. The Spirit helps. What does infirmity mean, Scott? An infirmity is like a like a weakness or illness or fault. a weakness, a yeah. fault. Okay, so like. Uh, Ricky was pointing out, we didn't design those weaknesses and faults ourselves. And everybody had them because if you didn't have them and you were like perfection, then Yahshua's a bust. You don't need them. Right. You see what I'm saying? So we all had these infirmities, and this Yahshua, this Holy Spirit in us, likewise, this Holy Spirit in us helps our infirmities. See, it's just like you, you know, walking and you can't make it to the end and somebody comes and gives you a hand and you lean and they help you get across. 
helps your infirmity, helps your weakness, see? And we all have them. It's just what it is. I mean, like it, don't like it. We all have infirmities. We have flesh bags. They're trouble. <laughs> no matter what you call it, they are trouble. Right, Dan? <laughs> I mean, it just goes on and on. Go ahead. For we know not what we should pray for as we, we know ought. not what we should pray for as we ought. Okay, because we have infirmities. So we're praying for that leg to heal. And that is maybe not what you need at that moment. You need something else. Yahshua is way ahead of you. Way ahead of you on what you need. Go ahead. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit itself makes these intercessions for us. The Spirit itself. Now, don't you have over... Can you get 2 Timothy? Is it 2 Timothy? Where it talks about the uh, mediator? Uh, uh, 2 and 5? 2 and 5, I think. 1 Timothy 2 and 5? We have somebody. We have this confidence of somebody that can get yeah, us to where time. we need to be. And thank goodness, because it's been already shown tonight, you're not going to do it on your own. Now, I'm going to show you a witness how you're not going to do it on your own. Okay? The high priest took beautiful gemstones on his garment. Now, just take a gemstone from a natural standpoint. Okay, your diamonds and all your things are sitting on this table. Do they have a chance or a prayer to get themselves up and walk and move into a compartment? No. They don't have a prayer, right? The bells and pomegranates, they're inanimate, right? They're sitting on the table next to the gemstones. Do they have a chance or a prayer to take themselves into the most holy place? No. No. But I'm going to tell you what, if somebody comes along and scoops them up, or this high priest has them on his garment, and he, by his feet and his service being ordered, the works of a righteous man are ordered, by him being able to take you up in there gives you that chance. And that's why we don't get a revelation on our own, but we've had one. We don't get a vision on our own, but we've had one. Because he gave it to us. Just like he gave it to the rest of them, he gave it to us. In pieces, but we are definitely seeing what they're seeing. Like this woman said to Doc, Oh, Doc, I want a, I want a vision. I want a vision and a revelation just like you. And he said, Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. I mean... Yahshua is no respecter of person. So he's just, he's given it to us. Here you go. See? Yep. Go ahead. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For there, is, for there is one Elohim. There's one Elohim. And one mediator between Elohim and men. Now here's your example. There's one mediator between the people that had to That's camp right. around on the Day of Atonement. They had to flick their souls. They couldn't be golfing. They had to be afflicting their souls on the Day of Atonement. They couldn't go themselves into the most holy place, but they had to be in tune. They had to afflict their souls. And think about what was going on on the Day of Atonement. Okay? There's one mediator. There's one that's going to be able to go up in there. But the beauty of it is his garments are garments of beauty and glory. And part of that reason is because you're on his garments. Right. His power, his praise, his mercy is part of that beauty and that glory. And he's able to take you up there and be his bride. That's part of his, like when he goes back, when he hands this thing, maybe we can get 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 28. When he hands this thing back to the Father, the beauty and the glory isn't going to be those garments. He's not going to be wearing bells and pomegranates, folks. He's going to be taking you, the bride. He's going to be taking you back to the Father and say what a good job he's done, see? 
And that's how you know when you look back and you see how Moses responded. Not my will, but thy will be done. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you see people like Moses and you see Aaron, Abraham, do you think it was Abraham's will to slap his son on an altar? And you know, over uh, get Hebrews, um, get Hebrews 11 and because you know how he knew that Abe, Isaac was coming down and, and um, Lionel already talked about it. He promised that through his seed, there'd be more, more seed than the sands of the seas and the stars of heaven. He can't kill 17. him. He don't know how it's going to all unfold, but he can't kill him. He says he received him in a type. That's why we are so adamant about types and shadows and then the reality. Did you find that? Hebrews 11 and 17. He received him in a type. And guess where he's dead and buried for three days? In the cloud. Doesn't, don't they say Abraham's an old man? Mm-hmm. He's dead and buried in the cloud for three days. And then what? Go ahead. Hebrews 11 and 17. Mm -hmm. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, mm -hmm. offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. His only begotten son. And, and Lionel's already covered this. And it's so, uh, you know, we had a lot of foundational information on this story already from Wednesday. Uh, Chuck ran these down, these uh, uh, barren women, barren women the, this whole Genealogy. generations of people and genealogies. Mm -hmm. And here he is, and he knows he did not get that boy on his own. Right. He knows it. Yep. Now, this kid's 25 years old here. Can I just say to you, he's old. Mike you think Charles can get you on an altar and, and go hand over a knife over the top of your head? Mike and Charles. This kid is 25 years old. You're at your prime when you're a young man of 25. Yeah. If you aren't not thy will, but thy will be done, Father, if that's not what's in your heart here, Isaac, you're going to punch him in the face and run like heck. <laughs> <gasps> right? That's true. Yes. What's he do? Dad, where's the lamb? <laughs> Yahweh himself will provide a lamb, right? Okay, Dad. Lays right down. Not my will, but thy will be done. Okay, Dad, now you've got fire and a knife and you're standing over me? What's that mean, Dad? Yahweh will provide himself a sacrifice. And doesn't it happen? Yeah. Abraham has no idea how that's going to play out. And neither do we. That's why we walk by faith. And that's why if you start reading horoscopes and you start getting your tea leaves read and you start going to soothsayers, you are in trouble. Because you know why? You're not walking by faith. Because you know why? Those people have power. Yeah, they do. You walk in and they say, oh, I recognize you, your dad, your grandpa was, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, mm. yes, he was. Oh, my God. Grandpa, are you here? Right? Now this, you're trying to get all this information from somebody that's crossed over. Those <laughs> people have power. That's the mystery of iniquity at its finest. And you are not walking by faith. You read your horoscope. Oh, you're going to meet a fine young man today. Whew. Okay. I've been looking for a fine young man, Yashua. Thank you. Okay, I go to the store. I meet him in the produce. Of course you do. That's where all the girls are meeting the guys these days, in the grocery. <laughs> They're talking about, my coworkers talk about it. So you got something going on, and then you're going to meet for dinner, and then, and then you know, find you in a trash barrel because he's a serial killer. Because you read your horoscope, you were going to meet a fine young man that day. You see what I'm saying? You are not walking by the faith of the operation. See? And the faith that's in us and the faith that's in Abraham, it's the same. Abraham said, yes. I'm going to be obedient. Not thy will, but thy, but 
your will, Yahshua, be done. And that's the same thing that Yahshua said when he was going to the cross. And that's the same thing we're going to say tonight. Not, not thy will, not my will, but your will. Is it our will to come down here on a Saturday night when Clemson is playing Eshu? Don't you want to just slam somebody for the way they, you know, schedule these games? No. Would not we do it on a Sunday or a Friday, Rick? All the games are on Saturday. But you are, you know, Wednesday. <laughs> not that you can't miss a game. I'm not saying that or miss a class to go to a game. But you know, for the most part, you're here. Yeah. You're here. It's just that simple. Like I was saying the other night, I have no desire to buy season tickets to football. And I was thinking today about uh, spending money. And I was thinking, the only thing I really do, because I don't do my hair, I don't do my nails, I don't do all these other, you know, gamble, smoke, drink, all these other things, I go, my hobby is I go to class and it's free. <laughs> I was like so happy <laughs> because I was thinking about yeah. spending money and, and you know, increasing your retirement and all this stuff. And I go, oh my God, the thing I do is free. It was just so convenient. <laughs> I thought, okay, all right, I'm in. But anyway, we walk by faith. Scott, I want you to finish that off because I want you to just think about this Abraham. Yahshua, he's already, the beloved son's already been dead and buried in the cloud, hasn't he? It's already played. Yahshua's already had this going on. It's just going to come out and manifest. And when things go down in our lives, it's not, not my will, Yahshua, but your will be done. And that's just how it goes. And you know what? You're not kicking. You're not biting. You're not mad. You're not angry. You're not impatient. That's just the way we are now. Not the way we were before, like Ricky was saying about how that DNA makes us up. Oh, no, no, no. Not that way. How we are now. Because we are completely satisfied in Yahshua. Completely satisfied in the way things are going. And you know how we know that? The way we just, we, we move in our daily round. And when Saturday comes, we just know at a certain time, it's shower time, dinner time, class time. That's the way we move. And my son Johnny, he needs me and John a lot to watch Carlo because he's trying to get on this house thing. And every time he calls me, he goes, Mom, you going to class tonight? And I'm like, yes, Johnny, it's Saturday. We're going to class tonight. So he, I, it just cracks me up. Like he wants me to say no so I can watch Carlo. <laughs> but, right. Mom, you going to class tonight? Yes. And so we almost brought Carlo tonight, but we moved Nikki and John he over way overdid it so he got to stay home with the two-year-old but anyway <laughs> I don't know what was worse you know like trying to you know but anyway you just know just the same way that you do things in your in your daily round in a physical way you just know what you're going to do because you want to get down here for whatever's whatever is going to be just like Abraham said read it again Scott. Hebrews eleven seventeen. It's so pretty. By faith, Abraham, yes. when he was tried, offered up Isaac. He's tried. <laughs> and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Offer, he received the promise. That promise is in your son. Nations are going to come forth in multiplicity and all families of the earth are going to be blessed. That's a promise. Okay. Yahshua didn't give me that promise. I don't got a million kids. Right? What promise did he give us? He told the disciples in Acts, wait for the power that you will receive on high. Yeah. Acts 2 and 1, Tress. Because guess what? We're still here getting that power. We're st they received the power and they went out and they blasted the gospel. We're still doing that. We're still preaching the death, the burial, the resurrection of a lamb. Showing the death, the burial, the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. Showing why that matters. It matters because now you're going to walk by faith. I used to think, Abraham, you were, that is so, I can't believe you were that powerful to, to have that kind of faith to do that with your son. It wasn't 
Abraham just gumptioned up with faith. That was the Holy Spirit in him causing that. The same promise he gave me. It, it, all these law and prophets, like Lionel said, are our parents. What do your parents do? They guide you. They show you. They reinforce behavior. They show things how things are. They show you how to be... Um, a good citizen. They show you how to be respectful, responsible, right? That's what our parents show us. And in this case, we're talking about Abraham, and he showed us how Yahshua would act. And see, Yahshua is as Isaac, and Yahweh Elohim is as the father. And what, what happened here? Is that, is that son, that beloved son on the cross? Not thy will, but thy will be done, Yahshua, yes. or Yahweh Elohim. And whammo, he got right up there, and they had the nerve to spit and chew and say, oh, get off the cross. You did so many other things. Get off the cross. He could have desolated yes. the whole thing. You want to, that's where, like, John's um, father, grandfather was a boxer, and he could, you know, knock, he's in the Hall of Fame over there in that, place in Canastota or wherever. Yeah. He's in the Hall of Fame. But guess what? He was a very silent, quiet man. And he could have knocked the, out of quite a, anybody. But he sat there quietly and kept his mouth shut and listened. See, that's where the power is. Anybody can be a big gazoo and get up there and slam you around, but trying to keep it all, you know, and here's Joshua because that's not the end of the purpose, to get up there and desolate things. His purpose is to pour out that Holy Spirit, mercy right. and truth. That's some power. And that's what we talk about down here, the long suffering we have for each other. And now, especially after Ricky read that article, now I have to be patient with Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's no, I can't say anything. Okay, go ahead. Keep reading, uh, Trissy. Acts 2 and 1, Deb? Yes. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Fully come. Now, what are we talking about? What day are we talking about? And can I add? June 6th. We, it's June 6th. What day did Dr. Kinley have the vision in Revelation? June, June, June 6th. June 6th, I believe. See, there was a June 6th back here. And here's Joshua on the day of Pentecost. Here's a June 6th, right? Mm hmm and, we t and he, we're talking about a Jew's Pentecost. And you know something? This was exclusive for seven years. And Lionel mentioned right. that they, were, they, they were had their Pentecost. Again. And then here comes the Gentiles yep. seven years later. This was exclusive to the Jews. Can That's you imagine right. that? Something so amazing. And it was only designated for the Jews for seven years. No matter how bad you wanted, you weren't going to get in there for seven years and then at Cornelius's house that's when Yahshua when the fullness of time was come here too Yahshua decided here we go so go ahead give it and when the day of Pentecost was fully come was and fully come all with one accord in one place yes and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting enough uh, Scott go to the uh, Gentiles. We don't want to leave them off the charts here. Go to the Gentiles. Um, Acts, Acts. Acts 10. Uh, not 34. The Gentiles Pentecost. 10. At the end, over to the end where they get the Holy Spirit without anything, anybody doing anything with water. Okay. Nope. Nope, and we just, nope. And it says Acts 10 here, but I can't get the scripture. Acts 10 and 44. Okay, go ahead. See, we're just talking about Pentecost, folks. Getting that spirit in you, because that's where we started. Go ahead. Yeah, that's While it. Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word. Now Peter's speaking, and the Holy Spirit's falling on people. He's not dipping. He's not giving a cracker and grape juice. He's not doing a bow down. He's not doing signs and, and hands on you. He's speaking the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit falls on these Gentiles. And the Jews that are with Peter are going, what in the world is going on? 
because don't forget they've been the only ones for seven years That's right. and they had to get in water and these guys over here it's not that way it's not so and it's not so tonight you're not getting in physical water go ahead and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished here's the circumcision jews they that believe saw these guys believing in the holy spirit falling on them and they were astonished yeah. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And we're talking about tonight, most of us here, I don't have Jewish heritage. We're talking about hearing the gospel, the words being preached like you heard tonight, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Falling on those that Yahshua decided way back in the cloud and i didn't get it but you know go over and read uh first corinthians 15 and 28 go over and read that yourself oh, and that. just yeah. what's ha what's happened there is that yashua with his bride is gonna hand it back over to the father and i'm just talking about in principle here there's not three people there's not a son and a dad but he's got his bride and that is his job that he fulfilled is to bring a bride back. Instead of desolating everybody when he's on that cross and saying, eh, he could not do that. He was, he was bound by the law and the prophets, just like that ram was bound in the thicket, right? Mm -hmm. And same thing with that crown of thorns. He's gonna have a crown of thorns. All these things are tight, folks, and we didn't know a thing about it until we got down here. So we keep coming. We praise Yahshua by learning to him and expressing what he's given us and always, always, always have the praise, the honor, and the glory go to our Father Yahshua. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Welcome you all back. We're here every Wednesday at 7.30 and every Saturday at 7 o'clock. Can we all rise for the doxology? <clears throat> I'll be reading the doxology from the last two verses of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say in unity, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Steps and mark and so a lift are going to put in, huh? Yeah. 